Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship. Whether you're joining us here in the building or by phone or computer, we're, we're glad that you're joining us today. We thank you for keeping up with your offerings for the congregation and the food pantry, because, of course, that's how we're able to do ministry. Communion is offered every week, and if you're worshiping from home, um, you know to stop and pick up um, communion kit at the church office. And if you're here, remember to pick up your communion kit before worship. And uh, you can also drop your offering in the offering plate. Um, please wait until after the bread is broken and the invitation is shared to open your communion kits. Zoom coffee hour on Sundays from 9.30 to 12.30, uh, set up so anybody can join at any time and chat with whoever happens to be there. Uh, we're looking for volunteers to read the scriptures during worship, either here in person or we can record you and insert it in the, in the program. Um, contact the church office for available dates. Um, also looking for people to um, learn how to run the computer and PowerPoint on Sunday mornings. Again, contact the church office for training and available dates. Uh, Wednesday evening is an Ash Wednesday service that is similar to the Sunday morning service, so you'll click on the church link and, um, and watch the service, but they'll also, the link will also be emailed to you. And because of COVID, we have prepared stickers with a cross to use instead of real ashes. If you'd like one for the service, uh, contact the office and pick them one up. Um, for those of you who are here, you can pick them up um, at, at, in, at the back, right? And um, there will also be a live service in the courtyard at noon on Ash Wednesday, and we will have real ashes. I'm going to put them on a, on a square of burlap, so you can put the ashes on your own forehead, but then that burlap will be something for you to keep. Masks and distance will be required, and we recommend that you bring your own chair, then we don't have to haul chairs in and out of Benson Hall, um, and there will be space for a few people to sit on the ledges. Birthdays today, Mac, Peyton, and Irene, and no anniversaries. Of course, in the building, please keep your mask on and sing softly. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God.
Holy God, you search, search us, us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, that for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And let's share Christ's peace with one another. Okay, time for children to come up. Both of you. <laughs> okay, today we talk about something special. Today is called Transfiguration Day. Meaning what? It means that you transform into something better spiritually. So today's story we learn, we watch about three disciples looking up and seeing Jesus being transformed on the mountain. And then, at the tradition every year, at the tradition every year, we talk about something celebrating Alleluia. Alleluia, mean praise God. Alleluia. Okay? So today, do you remember last year with Pastor Lynn, two of you had Alleluia, and both of you buried the Alleluia. Do you remember that? No, you don't remember? 
Ya. Hallelujah. Yeah. So last year, and we're going to do that again this year to help us focus and remember for the next 40 days what we do and pay attention and think about the celebration. Right, we hold that to Easter because it's exciting. We're looking forward to something. So during this time, okay, so hallelujah means praise God. So I'm going to have you two stand up. Stand up, please. Hey, let's dance, joy, get it all out. Praise God. Dance. Oh, dance, dance, shake it all about. Praise God. Joy for God. And then we're going to stuff it in here, and we're going to bury it. And then when the time comes, Evie, over here, please. When the time comes for the special celebration, we'll go look for it, and then we'll dance in joy and rejoice in hallelujah again, okay? Good dancing, Eve. Honey, see? Night kick. All right. Now we're going to walk over here. Where should we bury this? We gotta hide it, hide it. So maybe I, mom had an idea. Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go look. Get all the dancing out. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Get that out. Evie, over here, we're gonna go over here. Yes, okay. Last year, yes. Do you remember? So we're gonna put it in here. And we're gonna stay, and we're gonna wash, and we're gonna be excited when Easter comes, we'll look for it and celebrate rejoice again, okay? Good place. Yeah. Did you see where we put it? Right, okay, so shh, we're gonna leave it there. All right, now. Okay, all right, let's go view. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Lord, help us news the next few weeks to focus on you and remember that at the end, we will rejoice in you and we will praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. I wanted to just take a minute for a private word with you. I looked at our t two children who were in things, Lori's children, Roy and Kurt's children. That's the future of the church. And I think the church is in pretty good shape. Good people. Today's first reading is from 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, 
do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as once you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went down. Fifty men of the company of prophets who also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took up his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will be not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind up into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the, Kate, the chariots of Israel and its drivers. But when Elisha could no longer see Elijah, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm for today is a responsive reading of Psalm 50, 1 through 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect, perfect in its beauty, beauty God, God shines, shines forth in glory. glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence, with a consuming flame before and around about a raging storm. God calls, God calls the heavens heaven and the earth from above, above to witness the judgment of the, of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's of God. cause, for it is for God, God who is judged. judged. This morning's second reading is the reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let the light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge, of the glory of God, 
in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, why did the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come, and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? 
he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. To you, O Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. What a beautiful image that we have this morning to see Jesus on top of a high mountain and where Peter, James, and John were able to witness transformation of Jesus. Now, what does transformation mean for us? And what does that look like for us? Well, through what I've learned through seminary, basically, the transfigured Jesus is not something that we're supposed to figure it out. Instead, what? Jesus is supposed to be appreciated. On this Transfiguration Sunday, we can see there's a promise that Jesus can and will be needed. Notice, and Jesus insists on being seen. Why? So we can celebrate what we see and be shamed, transformed by what we see. Better yet, let us imagine how God is feeling during this time. I imagine God is smiling as God declared love for the one called Son. After all, that is how we stay of love as well. We delight when we talk about a loved one. Just like God is in delight as he talked about Jesus. God loves and God interacts. As God expresses this delight, we gain a little bit more insight into the divine heart. The bright light of the transfiguration affirmed life. A light that shined ahead into length to keep that season in perspective, always with hope and confidence. This light speaks a promise that God is here and that God is knowable. God's deep relationship because God is life. I ask you because God is life. God sees relationship, and we know today is a special day. It's Valentine's Day. For some, this is an exciting day. For others, it's a little bit more complicated. What we do know that love does not come from nowhere. It's the source in the one true God. Love is bound up in the glorious mystery of the intertrinarian love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This love is poured out in creation and wonderfully manifest in Jesus. So on this Valentine's Day, with underlying intent of love, of being kind, giving extra care to those around us, along with the love of God, the love God freely places inside each and every one of us. And that is what makes this day special. One way we can learn to identify and understand the love of God is through God's word. Then we can ensure God's love through our action to be that light. Sometimes, she says the love of God is hidden in a sunrise or a flower. We must keep our eyes open. We must be ready. And not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Is yours and my eyes open? How can we show love through our action? I invite you to watch this video that I have here for us to wrap up the sermon. Enjoy and amen. Scripture I want to quote is Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. It's a short message that I'm giving you. It's written, Oh, no man nothing except to love one another. He that loveth has fulfilled the Lord. So the message I give you is, oh, no man, nothing except to love one another. So try to say to someone, I owe you something. I owe you something. I owe you something. 
Please rise as you are able. Let us confess our faith, <clears throat> excuse me, with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. 
for all who suffer this day. Especially we pray for Anita, Dawn, Alex, Noreen, Judy, Margaret, Sharon, Wilma, Jean C, Jean D, Marcia, Claudia, Joy, Pat G, Chuck and Helen, Carol, Diane, Shirley, Helen M, Jim, Joan, Dodie, Bill and Jan, Gertrude, Carol S, Mary, Bobby and Gwenda, Gail and Dolores, that Christ our healer transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consultation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For companion on life's journeys in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those celebrating their day of birth this week, Mac, Peyton, and Irene, bless them today and always. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We pause to give you time for your own prayers. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table, and sent from this table to your home. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Gotta turn that off. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Amen. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you, and Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. rise as you are able. 
Go in peace, be the light of Christ. The worship has ended, let our service begin. Thanks be to God.